This is the Matterin Form 3, and it's got the capability to scan objects to an insane degree of accuracy, all the way down to 33 microns, which is actually smaller than the width of a human hair. You put the object on a turntable, fire up the scanner, dial in your settings, hit scan, and then boom, you've got a fully workable 3D scan for use with 3D printing, CNCing, and lots of other creative applications. That's the massively simplified workflow anyway. There's lots more that goes into getting a perfect 3D scan, which we'll get into, but let's talk about why you'd want to do this first. I like making stuff. One of my favorite things to do is design and build parts for my vehicles. I have a 35-year-old Miata in my garage, and some parts can be a little hard to find for it or just plain expensive, so I build them. I needed to switch the other day to control an aftermarket accessory, so I pulled out the factory blanking plate in the car and scanned it with the MAF-3. Because it's so accurate, I can use it as a perfect reference for modeling a new flat blanking plate with a hole in the center for a rocker switch that I had lying around. It came out perfectly on the first try. I didn't have to painstakingly measure every dimension with a set of digital calipers like I normally do for this sort of thing. I do have to paint it to look factory though. The MAF-3 comes in this extremely nice hard shell carrying case, and everything is well protected inside. From the moment that you unbox this scanner, it's clear that build quality is seriously top-notch. Most 3D scanners require a separate PC that you would plug your scanner into. This one doesn't. The only cables in the box are for the turntable and the power adapter. That's because there's a computer actually built into the scanner itself. All the software actually runs through your internet browser on your local internet, and you can access it on any computer you have, no matter if it's a PC, a Mac, Linux, whatever. So when it comes to workflow with using any 3D scanner, there's a few things that you need to do to make sure that the part you're scanning actually scans well. 3D scanners do not like reflections. So if you've got a part with a glossy surface, you need to fix that. Many people, myself included, use a 3D scanning spray, which applies a kind of surface coating that actually sublimates or disappears within a few hours. It looks like spray paint, but it's not. The spray will give the object a matte finish with a single color so that the scanner can scan it correctly. Once that's done, you place the object in the middle of the turntable and focus the cameras on it. There are two different stereo cameras that are used to capture depth information, and the object needs to be visible in both of them to be able to scan it. Then you calibrate the turntable. The Include this little calibration card that you put onto the turntable. The table will spin left and right and self-calibrate so that the scanner knows exactly where the turntable is in relation to itself. Then you put your object back onto the turntable and dial in your lighting settings. You want to make sure that no part of the model is highlighted in red. That means that your cameras are overexposed and the scanner won't be able to capture the information correctly. You can also change how many different scan points you want to capture as the turntable spins, and if you want only a, a certain portion of the object or the full 360 degrees. Once you hit start scan, the scanner will take care of the rest. You'll see it project all these little lines across the object so that the cameras can capture all the dimension data about every part of the object. Then it'll spin and it'll do it over and over again until it does the full 360 degrees or whatever you set it to. From there, the scanner will stitch together all of the individual scans and present you with your 3D image. For some objects, all you might need to do is a single scan, but to really get the most accurate and complete scans, you'll need to do this a couple of times. Scan once when the object is right side up, and again when it's upside down, for example. The MAF-3 can actually scan things from multiple orientations and then automatically align them in the software in seconds. That's a huge time-saving feature. Some car parts can get really complex, like this door cup trim piece. This was done with multiple scans and then stitched together automatically, and it came out great. At this point, I can export these 3D scans in a ton of different formats, and you can merge all of the scans together or export them separately. If you get a good enough scan, sometimes you can import these directly into your slicer of choice and then just go to town with 3D printing an exact clone of what you just scanned. But more often than not, you're gonna wanna modify the scan in some way by importing it into some CAD like Fusion 360 and then using it as a reference to build something new. Despite this being a very cool product, it's not perfect. The team that makes this scanner are actually fellow Canadian but they're a small team and this is very advanced tech that they're building. So I've run into a few bugs here and there like, you know, alignment failures on tiny objects or problems connecting to the Wi-Fi through the scanner. 3D scanning can also be a little tough to get right and it often takes a lot of finessing through the software with multiple scans to get something decent. So don't expect to get perfect scans on your first go around. There's a little bit of a learning curve here to figure out what works best. 
Luckily, the software has some tutorials that are built right in, and the Matter Inform team are very responsive to help out when things don't go your way. And they should be. This scanner is not very easy on the wallet. Yes, it has a full computer built into it, and all the parts of the system are very well designed, but it's still over 3,000 Canadian dollars, so it definitely falls more into the niche prosumer market segment. If you're interested in picking up one of these for yourself, I'll leave a link for you in the description below. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day.